Yo guys, what is going on? JPS back for another video and today we're going to be reviewing how the United Kingdom's healthcare system works as an American. So if you know anything about America, we don't have free healthcare. Um, I'm not exactly sure how the United Kingdom's healthcare system works. I know essentially nothing about it. So I'm um, intrigued. So yeah, let's watch this video and see how different their healthcare system is when compared to the American way. Super Tuesday came and went, and the Democratic presidential race is narrowing to two very different candidates, far left Bernie Sanders and the more moderate Joe Biden. Oh, Biden this was made a while ago. Hold on. Okay, March 6th. Biden and Sanders have clapped. know how this went. <laughs> on the best approach to reforming U.S. health care. Sanders wants to get rid of private insurance altogether, while Biden proposes building on the framework left over from Barack Obama's Affordable Care Act. Bernie says that you have to bring people together and uh, we have to have Medicare for all. But Bernie says, and he says he wrote the damn thing, but he's unwilling to show us what the damn thing's going to cost. The idea middle class taxes aren't going to go up is, out of, is just crazy. What Medicare for all will do is save the average American substantial sums of money. The U.S. already spends more money on health care than any other developed country. There's one country that spends less than half what the U.S. does on health care, and people generally don't pay anything out of pocket when they go to the doctor, the United Kingdom. And out of all the health care systems we've looked at, the U.K. appears the most socialist. The government effectively runs the whole thing. Right now, the U.K. is having its own debate over how to reform the National Health Service. So how does the U.K. system compare to the U.S.? And what reforms may be coming? I'm interested, man. I'm interested. That's all I'm going to say. In 2018, the United States spent around 10,500 U.S. dollars on health care for each of its residents. The United Kingdom spent around 4,000 U.S. dollars. That means the United Kingdom spends 9.8% of its GDP on health care, while the U.S. spends 16.9%. Despite spending less, the United Kingdom manages to have healthier citizens who live longer and are less likely to die in childbirth. I don't get that. If our current system is so bad, yet costs so much, why are we so hesitant to reform it in the United States? In 2017, life expectancy in the UK was 2.7 years higher than in the US. And the UK has roughly 1.5 times fewer deaths that could have been avoided by access to better health care. The infant mortality rate is lower in the United Kingdom, with 3.9 deaths per 1,000 live births, as opposed to 5.8 in the United States. And the maternal mortality rate in the US is nearly 1.5 times higher than in the United Kingdom. So how is the UK system structured so that it gets these results while spending significantly less than the United States system. Nice B-roll. The National Health Service is a case where the British decided right after World War II that health care should be government's job, like paving the streets, putting out fires, running the library, running the parks. That's T.R. Reed, author of the book, The Healing of America. He traveled the world exploring different countries' healthcare systems. It's a service you get when you need it and you never get a bill. It's like going to the library. They don't charge you to check out a book. Key thing about the NHS is it's a risk sharing system. So everyone pays into it through their tax. If you need to use it, mm -hmm. you don't have to pay anything else. So uh, I mean, it makes some sense. But like, I think what people are worried about is like <laughs> the taxes rising for middle-class Americans, which is what Biden was talking about. Because it, I agree that, you know, obviously everyone's like, okay, yeah, taxes, we tax more to the wealthy and less to people who don't have as much money, but it's supposed to help average Americans when in reality, wouldn't that hurt the middle? I don't know, I, let's keep watching. Like I said, my opinion will progress as the video progresses. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. I'm gonna speak my mind instead of just holding it back and be like, oh, what if it's wrong? It's probably wrong, just wait. Uh, in a sense, it's not free because it's paid out of taxation. Dr. John Puntis is a pediatrician who recently retired from the NHS. He is also co-chair of an organization called Keep Our NHS Public. All of his comments are reflective of the organization and not his personal views. It's a, a fair system in that uh, 
the more money you earn, the more tax you pay, uh, and the more you um, mm -hmm. contribute. But there has been discussion about whether tax should be increased to pay for sorting the NHS out in terms of the current deficiencies and problems. And that, that is controversial. I think a lot of people favour some tax increase, but then there are other people who say, well, maybe the focus should be on companies that don't pay tax and people that aren't paying tax as the first step. I would call that socialized medicine. Government provides the care, government pays for the care, it's paid for through taxes, everybody's covered the same. To me, that sounds like socialized medicine. The term socialized medicine has become a political football, especially in the... But, but Jesus, if you heal them, that would be... Oh. Yeah, there is a lot of backlash towards socialism in the United States. Um, I, I just don't fully grasp socialism. I, I think I don't really understand it to its core. To make like a statement about it. The United States. If the NHS, if that's socialized medicine, it's great. And we, we hear this term mainly coming from the US where it's used as a uh, as um, for scaremongering. I would say uh, if the NHS is socialized medicine, uh, we like it. And most people are still very, very supportive of the concept of a, of, a, of a national health service. Each of the UK's four constituent countries have their own branch of the NHS, so rules differ slightly between them, but all of the branches operate under the purview of the UK Parliament. There are some services that require patients to pay something out of pocket, such as dental, eye care, and certain prescription drugs. Which, which makes sense. But those fees are low compared to the US and vary by NHS branch. By one estimate from a data analytics firm, prescription drugs Pop into perks, baby. Drugs cost 57% less in the UK than they do in the US. Unlike with other universal healthcare systems that are only publicly funded, the government also runs the NHS. That means doctors that work- it's So weird seeing people walk around without masks. In um. public NHS facilities are employees of the government. Most Britons receive their primary care through general practitioners who are frequently referred to as GPs. They typically act as gatekeepers for secondary care. The problems that people are experiencing at the moment is it's taking longer to see your general practitioner uh, if you want to see them. Most GPs are private contractors with the NHS. They don't charge patients for care. Instead, they earn money directly from the National Health Service. Many so the National Health Service is paying private companies to give free health care. And the National Health Service is using money paid from people's taxes. So it's really not free health care. Okay, this is starting to make a little more sense now. It's not free health care, especially if you get because it's going to be expensive. So you have to raise taxes. So you're really paying for other people's. You're. Oh, OK. I'm getting I'm getting it. Many GPs negotiate contracts with the NHS. So people don't want to pay like higher taxes because the people who are most likely going to be using the free health care more are going to be the you know poorer people who are barely even paying as many taxes as much taxes as them in the first place. So like, why should I pay for, it's two completely different ways of thinking. It's like, oh, we should help everybody. Some people don't think like that. And that's, you know, a lot of people will be like, oh, that's not the way you should think. But I, I don't know. HS. It's making sense now. To determine how much they can charge the government for their services. GPs may fund their own general practice facilities, or they can rent them from the NHS or private companies. One paper from the Journal of the Royal Society of Medicine found that GPs face many issues because of how general practices are funded in the UK. Some GPs, uh, I, I think increasingly, don't want to take on the running a business aspect of general practice. And so there, there, there are lots of GPs who are uh, salaried partners. So they, they are paid by the practice to come in and work as a GP, but they don't do any of the business side of the stuff. There's also a private sector in the UK's healthcare system. It's funded from a combination of out-of-pocket payments, private health insurance, and the NHS itself. The, the private sector is growing because it's being consciously promoted uh, by government and the, the boundaries being blurred. Well, I think that private healthcare has been growing at, at a very uh, rapid, steady pace in the United Kingdom for the course of 
of several decades, that's going to uh, continue. That's Niall Gardner. He's the director of the Thatcher Center for Freedom at the Heritage Foundation. With regard to the National Health Service, I mean, there's no there's so no why? sign at this stage that. So why is the private sector growing so much? People are tired of like, oh, because the, the general practitioners aren't good. So the people who can afford it, I'm assuming, are going to go to, you know, the private ones. So, <laughs> hold on. The UK will be moving to uh, a different system to the National exactly. Health Service. Yeah, they're going to move because it's not good. So people are, it's all about where the money is, man. People will pay for it. Too. All British uh, parties are committed to the National Health Service. I think that uh, more and more Britons will be opting for private health care in the coming yeah. years and, and decades. And if, you know, if they get the majority, regardless of if they make any like legislative moves, you know, if people are moving to the private sector, they're moving to the private sector. Like that's something that's controlled by the people, regardless of what, you know, Parliament says. But I find it really interesting um how the system's set up because it's just so different in the united states and it seems like a good system probably just not being executed in the best manner right now not least because there are long waiting lists with regard to the national yeah. health service an analysis from the london school of economics found that in the 2018 to 2019 fiscal year nhs england spent around 18 percent of its total expenditure on the independent sector Jeez. there's been a blurring of the boundaries if you like for example cataract surgery which is the most common operation done under the NHS. Increasingly, it's being provided in the independent sector and the NHS is, uh, has contracts with the independent sector to do that work. There are implications in terms of staffing. Private sector doesn't train its own staff. It takes it from the NHS. It cherry picks, takes the uh, low risk patients, not the high risk patients. It has an impact on training NHS staff. And this is one of the problems with cataract surgery, if they're all going to the private sector hospitals, then the NHS staff don't become experienced. I see. So all the good ones are stepping. They're going to the private sector. Okay. In doing cataract surgery, and then along the line, you find it. And then the people getting the NHS healthcare who need surgery, surgery are going to just go to the private sector because they're not they don't want a bad surgery like you don't want to mess around with surgery it's more difficult to staff your nhs unit so it's not without negative consequences we are paying private companies increasingly to do work for the nhs including american companies and they're very well established now particularly in uh, back office functions and providing advice on uh, commissioning support this kind of thing uh, they're very involved uh, and unfortunately that's likely to increase and it's something which campaigners um, are extremely uh, worried about. I don't think anyone really believed that UK voters would decide to Brexit. The news that the United Kingdom voted to leave the European Union shocked the world. The NHS was a big part of the Brexit media discourse, with the Leave campaign famously claiming that the UK would take back £350 million a week that could then be funneled into the NHS. The UK Statistics Authority has since said that the claim is a, quote, clear misuse of official statistics. My name is Holly Jarman. I'm an assistant professor. Looks like a lot of problems in the UK right now. Set in the Department of Health Management and Policy at the University of Michigan. Those promises really did hit home for a lot of people. The idea that money would come back um, from Europe to the UK was a very powerful symbol. It's not actually true. Uh, that wasn't really how uh, EU financing works. But we still saw that that was a big part of the media discourse and most likely part of people's judgment when they were casting their vote. The UK officially left the EU three years after the original Brexit. Like, I didn't even know about that. That's how unaware I am of any situation overseas. I never even knew that happened. I probably heard about it, but it's just swept under the rug of in my brain, I guess. The vote entering a transitory period through the end of 2020 while the UK government negotiates international trade deals. The concerns about private American corporations engaging more with the NHS came up during the discussion of the post-Brexit trade talks with the United States. When you're dealing in trade, everything's on the table. Yeah. 
So NHS or anything else, or a lot, a lot more than that. Backlash to President Trump's comments on the NHS led to many British politicians assuring their constituents that the NHS was not going to be a part of the trade talks. The NHS is in no way on the table. President Trump then backtracked on his comments, saying he wouldn't consider the NHS as part of the trade deal. A lot of trade negotiations are actually quite secretive by nature. The two sides don't really want to reveal a lot about what they're looking for in it. What were they even trading? Deal. Our concern really as health researchers is that the NHS really won't be accounted for in that deal. That the UK government's preferences have been shown to be largely economic um, and not so much on the focusing on the health of people in Britain. The problem is that the NHS is is already on the table. It has been for a while. But the politicians who, who are... Which could arguably be just as problematic as the healthcare situation in the United States. Now we're going to be negotiating the trade deals. You know, it's going to be across many fronts. Campaigners were saying, OK, put your money where your mouth is. If, if you're saying the NHS won't be in the trade deal, then let's see legislation that sets that out so it's cast in, uh, in stone. And uh, uh, they haven't rushed to do that. I'm not going to lie. I still don't know why people expect politicians to hold any promises. Like, if you avidly follow a politician and believe in everything they say you really need to rethink your life because no politician is doing anything for you your its constituents no that is it's a such a dirty game i don't care what country you live in if you actually are with that bro trade negotiations cover everything at once and it's difficult to tell um, how they are going to be pushing for the liberalisation of drug regulations and to what extent the Johnson cabinet would actually agree with any changes that would be proposed to the way the UK regulates pharmaceuticals. It's really a central government-led process that's not that democratic and does represent big business and I think that's why a lot of people get very concerned and anxious around trade agreements. There are some who say the NHS won't be harmed by Brexit, even in the event a trade deal with the EU isn't reached by the end of the year. I don't expect that we're going to see uh, huge changes actually in the Brexit era with regard to the mm -hmm. uh, to the National Health Service. And so I think with, with regard to the NHS, uh, we're not likely to see a significant impact as a result of, of Brexit. I think the... Uh, Seems like the National Health Service is probably going to be, you know, taken out eventually because of the private sector. I, I think going into this video, I expected a much more like solidified healthcare system from the UK. I, I know there's definitely a system in place, more of a system that exists in the United States, but I didn't expect it to be crumbling at its core like it is now after watching this video. But yeah, I mean, I guess everything has problems. This video is more outlining the problems of the healthcare system rather than showing how it works. I mean, it did go through that a bit, but a lot of this has been like the current events and issues with the healthcare system. The, the free the NHS. trade deal will be largely focused upon uh, the service industry, which of course is now the largest part of both of the US and British economies. Whatever effect the trade deals end up having on the UK, reforming the NHS will continue to be a big part of the country's political conversation. People's support for the NHS in the UK is very strong. There's no other country that when we hosted the Olympics in London, we had nurses jumping on beds and the NHS was actually a part of that ceremony and a part of that <laughs> national celebration. The That's UK's NHS is actually a part of that ceremony and a, we said. had had nurses jumping on beds and the NHS was actually a part of that ceremony and a part of that national celebration. The UK's NHS is very important in British politics. It's um, oh, an important real? symbol of um, I couldn't tell. Britishness in that context. She said Britishness. Really, it's important. I couldn't tell. Um, anyways, guys, that is how the United Kingdom's healthcare system works and to be completely honest after watching that video i might just be a little more confused <laughs> um you know it looks like they're going for definitely a socialized healthcare system but you know like everything that doesn't work it's kind of like nah it's not really like that i was gonna make a dumb comparison but yeah uh comment down below how you feel 
about the United Kingdom's healthcare system and how you feel about the United States healthcare system. Um, which is better? Uh, comment down below what you think. And you think healthcare should be free? It's crazy that I'm even asking that question, but it is what it is. So, yeah, leave a like. Uh, also, if you uh, would like to help me out, uh, comment some videos you'd like me to react to or some topics, and I can find some videos on them. And yeah, subscribe for more reactions. And that's basically all I got for y'all. That was how the United Kingdom's healthcare system works. And I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.